Hi guys, good evening to everybody. Once again, we are coming back to the lesson genetic code and the relationship between the genetic code and the mutations. So, accordingly, we have just normally four different types of point mutations. We have discussed already about missense mutation and a classical example for that one, the sickle cell anemia. Then, about the silent mutation. So, normally, because of what we call the redundancy, that is, there is more than one codon for an amino acid. In such cases, even sometimes mutation occurs in one codon will not cause any change in the protein sequence, that is amino acid sequence in the protein. This is because even if there is an error that will affect actually the protein will not occur. The reason for that one. So the error or mutation that would not affect the protein, this is because the hydrophobicity or hydrophilicity of the protein is maintained due to the equivalent actually just a substitution of an amino acid. I mentioned also the example. So if you have for example, this is a codon for glycine. A mutation occurs in the last letter, the last position, the third position. So that it is being converted into what is called triple G. And both the codons are actually just specifying the amino acid glycine. Though mutation occurred, there is no visible change either in the protein or in the phenotype. This is because of the redundancy of what is called the genetic code. That means the reason for that one, two or more codons are specifying an amino acid. So we are using the code for hydrophobic protein. So we are using actually a code for example NUN. That is, it tends to code for just a hydrophobic amino acids. And NCN, just to have no little bit, not no be related to what is called the index point of view, but you have to know. If we have the code just actually NUN that is referring to the hydrophobic amino acid and NCN, the code for what is called hydrophilic amino acid. So the hydrophobicity or hydrophilicity is maintained because of the equivalent just a substitution of amino acid even though mutation occurred in a particular base. This is because of the redundancy. That is two or more codons now specifying the same amino acid. Now the next one, nonsense mutation. See so if you are taking the genetic code, we have three different types actually codons which do not specify for any of the 20 amino acids. These codons do not specify any of the 20 amino acids are called nonsense codon. As they stop the transcription process, they are called termination codon or stop codon. Now what will happen here? If you have a functional codon, there is a mutation in the functional codon. So a mutation in the functional codon can change that functional codon into a nonsense codon or a stop codon. So mutation that resulted in the formation of a nonsense codon or stop codon is called nonsense mutation. For example, the codon for tyrosine is EAC. This is a codon. Mutation occurred in that codon. As a result, this codon gets converted to UAA, one of the nonsense codon. So a codon, a functional codon, has been changed into a non-functional codon, namely the stop codon, or we can say that is a nonsense codon. Hence, that type of mutation is called nonsense mutation. So a mutation that resulted in the formation of any one of the three nonsense codons is called what is known as nonsense mutation. Now, the fourth type of all the types of point mutations, the most deleterious, the most harmful mutation is nothing but frame shift mutation. So what do you mean by frame shift mutation? It's either the insertion or deletion of a base or a nucleotide, one or two bases that will change the entire frame reading. So the reading frame of what is called the nucleic acid in the DNA has been changed because of what is called either the addition that is known as called the insertion or the removal or the deletion of a base. So a mutation that is resulted because of the addition that is what is called the insertion or deletion of one or two bases that will bring about a change in the entire reading frame of the DNA is called what is known as frame shift mutation. So it may be insertion mutation or deletion mutation. That's why I mentioned here frame shift, insertion and deletion. A mutation that causes a change in the entire frame reading or the reading frame, the one which has the message. So what will happen? Insertion and deletion of three or its multiple bases. 
which will normally lead to insert or delete one or more multiple colons. While a base is inserted or deleted, it will cause a change. What is called actually delete or just actually one or more, that is multiple colons, or insert one or more multiple colons. Hence, we can have one or multiple amino acids have been inserted or deleted. So, because of the deletion and insertion of one or multiple letters, what we have the basis leading to insert or delete one or more multiple colons. As a result, what will happen? The reading frame has been changed. So that we have either insertion or deletion of one or more amino acids in the protein. This is what is called frame shift mutation. This is nothing but actually change in the reading frame in the DNA because of the mutation, because of any addition or deletion of bases. It may be one base or two bases, like that we have. So what will happen? The reading frame remains altered from that point onwards. The reading frame remains altered just actually from that uh, point onwards. This is what we have. So it is altered. Once we see just actually that is uh, the picture, we can understand the meaning for that one. The reading frame remains altered from the point onwards, from the point of insertion or from the point of deletion. So this is altered, not unaltered. Then, so you'll have it. So here is an illustration showing uh, the frame shift insertion. So, maybe one base is inserted or two bases are inserted. Now, this is the original reading frame. We have the initiated colon A U G to the new for finite alanine, like that we have many colons. Now, in this point, a single base has been inserted. Now, you see that one adenine base has been inserted. As a result, what will happen? This new base or eraser base has been shifted to the next position. So that we have, for example, instead of just we have ECU, we have UUC. Now this U has been shifted to the next position. Like that, actually one base has been shifted from one place to another, possibly towards the right side. As a result, what will happen? One base is left alone. We see that one, the reading frame has been changed. This is what we call the reading frame, having the messages in the form of codons normally. And that codon actually specify an amino acid. So here, one base has been normally just inserted addition. Now here in the downward direction, we have two bases have been inserted. Now actually, what will happen? Both nucleotides U and U have been normally just removed because of the insertion of that one. These two bases have been shifted to the next code. So, you see that one, this codon has also been changed. The reading frame has been changed. That's why I say the reading frame remained altered from the point of insertion or point of deletion. You see that one, there is an alteration. The entire reading frame has been altered. Not an alter, has been altered. Just actually resulting in the formation of a different protein having different sequence of amino acids. So, here is an example of addition or insertion. A base is inserted so that the base here is shifted to the next codon. As a result, you see that one, this codon has been changed. This codon already changed because of the shifting, the codon has also changed from ECU to EUC. Likewise, when two bases are inserted, you see that one, this codon already has been changed and this one has been changed into TWU for finite alanine. So, specifying the amino acid phenyl alanine that resulted in the formation of different sequence in a protein. Similarly, we have an illustration also for the deletion. So, this is the original reading frame. This is the original reading frame. So, this base has been deleted. One base has been deleted. So, as a result, what will happen? This base is shifted towards the left, left hand direction or towards the left side. So that we have a change in what is called a codon specifying just simply the finite alanine. Though there is no change, but actually you see that one the entire frame has been changed. So here you see that one C, it is being shifted and this one being shifted here and this one being shifted here like that. So that is what is happening as a result because of the single base deletion. One of the codons have only two nucleotides instead of what is called the triplet codon. Now, when you are just deleting two bases, 
so the direction of two bases or two nuclear tanks. As a result, what happened? These two bases have been shifted to this codon. So the codon has been entirely changed from triple U to just use C. And similarly, this codon, you see that one CCU, it has been changed into triple U. Likewise, this one has been changed into triple G like that. This is because of the shifting towards the left side because of the deletion of two bases. As a result, one base is left or one nucleotide is left. So we have insertion or deletion. So that what will happen, the entire frame has been changed because of the shifting of what is called the bases due to the addition or just the deletion of nucleotides or bases. Now, what is the importance of this frame shift mutation? So, if you have the frame shift mutation, the second codon, which is highly deleterious, of all the four mutations, the most harmful mutation will be the frame shift mutation. So, any frame shift mutation, the second codon is highly deleterious. So, what is the reason for that one? So, any mutation, the second position will cause a physical chemical change in the amino acids. The property or the character or the feature of the amino acid has been changed because of the what is called frame shift mutation. This is one. The second importance, and now this forms the actual genetic basis of proof that the codons are triplet. You see that one, one codon or one letter, one base has been removed from a codon, another one may be added, or if you just add one, just one letter to that codon. It is, made, it is being shifted to the next one, but there is no change in the triplet nature of what is called the codon. So, because of the frame shift mutation, one can understand that the codon is always triplet. And it is always read in a contagious manner without any comma, without any punctuations. That is why I can say what is called comma-less. This is a proof. Because of the mutation, only one can be able to know the codon is always triplet and is normally read in a contagious manner. Now, one more significance, in eight amino acids, even when you have what is called a mutation, the third letter of the codon, which does not cause any change in that amino acid. So, eight amino acids are not at all affected. This is because of the mutation at the third position of what is called the codon. So, specific amino acids, only eight amino acids out of the 20 amino acids have not been affected even if there is a mutation in the third position of the codon. This is one of the importance of the frame shift mutation. Though the remaining 12 amino acids have been affected, have been actually changed because of the frame shift mutation, eight amino acids are not at all affected, even though mutation will have a change in the third position of the codon. That's the base. So these are all the different types of what we have, the mutations, and the relationship between the genetic code and mutations, and that is the proof and actually giving the relationship between the genes and DNA and also showing that the triplet nature of the codon because of the frame shift mutation. So for that you have to know something about it. Now, the first stage in gene expression is transcription. We have seen already the process of transcription. The second stage in the process of actually gene expression is translation. So what is translation? So in molecular biology and genetics one can see that it is nothing but actually the polymerization of amino acids to form a polypeptide chain or a protein. Simply, we can say. Simply, we can say formation of protein by just decoding the codon of the mRNA. So, the codons in the just what is called mRNA being decoded, and as a result, we are getting the sequence of amino acids. Amino acids are added one after another and polymerization results in the formation of a polypeptide chain or protein. Now let's have some figures just to recall. So what is translation? So we have the DNA, this is what is called the transcription unit. One of the DNA strand is acting as a template. In the transcription unit, we have the promoter and the gene encoding protein, nothing but the structural gene and also we have the terminator. Now, the gene encoding for protein undergoes transcription process so that we can have that is what is called pre mRNA, which has been processed later to form the mature mRNA or active mRNA. And in the case of eukaryotes, it is happening inside what is called the nucleus, 
It is being exported through the nuclear force and reaching the cytoplasm and reaching the endoplasmic reticulum with the ribosomes where the translation of mRNA possibly taking place in the endoplasmic reticulum that is rough endoplasmic reticulum, the one which has ribosomes because the ribosomes are considered as a factory of the cell, protein factory of the cell. So the message in the mRNA has been translated to form the protein. So what is given here is nothing but what is called the central dogma. The DNA is undergoing transcription. Now the mRNA is undergoing translation to form the protein. What is happening inside the cell? This is what we have that. Just the central dogma, what I mentioned, the translation alone. This is what is happening inside the cell. Some more pictures. Now, we already seen, by means of transcription process, we have received the pre-mRNA, which is being processed by means of splicing, tailing, capping, and the addition of UTR at the 3 dash end and 5 dash end, etc. So we have received a mature MR. Now a mature MR is having what is called a coding region. That is the coding region having normally the codons form being translated to form the protein. Now the coding region, we have the starting codon in the form of AUG for methionine and we have at the end a termination codon, what is called the stop codon, either UAE or UAG or UGE and on either side we have untranslated regions at the 5 dash N and the 3 dash N, UTR referring to untranslated regions. These regions are also actually transcribed along with the coding sequence of DNA the one which is coding for protein and that is why they are also described as what is called exonic part, exons because they are also found in the mature just mRNA. So in the mature mRNA we don't have introns but we have exons that is a coding sequence and also UTR untranslated region meaning that these regions will not be translated though they are present along with the coding region, the mature mRNA, but they have some specific functions, I will tell you later. Now, this is another one, transcription, translation, just want to give an idea. So now we have, I mentioned about, that is, this is what is called the coding sequence in the DNA molecule, having both introns and exons, the coding sequence of DNA and non-coding sequence of DNA and this is a coding sequence for RNA. Now the transcription takes place as a result we will see what is called unmatured mRNA or pre-mRNA. This pre-mRNA is having both exon and introns. Exons are coding sequence and introns are non-coding sequence which are not useful. And we have the processing, you know that one, the capping and then polyadenylation process leading to what is called the processing of RNA which resulted in the mature mRNA. A mature mRNA is having what is called cap at the 5 dash end, then polyadenyl tail at the 3 dash end, and then we have the protein coding sequence along with just what is called UTR at the 5 dash end and 3 dash end, like that. And which is being translated soon to form the protein. This is what is happening. What it represented, though I use the term that is a heading transcription translation, all referring to the central dogma. So, what is happening inside the cell that is called as a central dogma, which includes what is called the transcription and then translation. Transcription actually from the DNA, the message has been transcribed in mRNA. And now the mRNA is acting as a template from where the message has been translated to form protein that resulted in polypeptide protein. This is what we have inside the cell. So that's why I say it. Transcription is the first stage in gene expression and translation is the second stage in gene expression. So I give it here also. So anyway, the first step in gene expression is nothing but transcription. The second step in gene expression is nothing but translation. The message has been transcribed in mRNA that one has been translated to form protein, that is a second step. And that is the one what is happening inside the cell, what we call this one as a central dogma. I mentioned already what it meant by just actually the meaning for translation. That is in terms of molecular biology and genetics. Translation refers to the process of polymerization of amino acids. So as to form a polypeptide chain or a protein. Now the proteins are considered as a what horses of the cell. 
the proteins are considered as the what horses of the cell because we need it badly for the synthesis of various uh, products in the cytoplasm that is why they are called as the what horses of the cell so anyway during translation what will happen the message from the that is mrna has been read by what is called trna and then translated to form protein that is decoded the codon being decoded the codon present the mrna being decoded to form what is called the protein that is what is happening during the translation process the message that is carried by the mrna has been decoded now so normally you know that one the order and sequence of amino acid which is the first amino acid which is the second amino acid that refers to the order and sequence of amino acids in a protein molecule are normally defined or determined by the sequence of bases in mrna or sequence of nucleotides in mrna this is the what the message for the sequence of amino acids to be added or to be formed in a protein is being determined or defined by the bases in mrna what will happen in translation the mrna produced by transcription is normally decoded i mentioned already by whom the ribosome complex the one which is formed on the messenger rna at the time of translation so the message in mrna has been decoded by the ribosome complex to form or to produce what is called specific protein or polypeptide this is what is happening the message in the mrna has been decoded by who one complex what is called ribosome complex that is formed on the mrna that is mainly responsible for it. actually what is a ribosome complex not with the mrna with what is called some factors initiation factors they are responsible just actually for the translation process and if you are taking bacteria there is only one compartment where translation occurs in the cytoplasm but in the case of eukaryotic cell non with translation act translation occurs across the membrane of endoplasmic reticulum by one process or by one phenomenon the name of the process by which protein synthesis takes place or translation takes place in just actually the endoplasmic membrane across the endoplasmic membrane we can say is called vectorial synthesis the process of synthesis of proteins across endoplasmic reticulum in eukaryotic cells not in bacterial cells there it occurs in the cytoplasm here it occurs across the membrane and the endoplasmic reticulum the one which has the ribosomes the protein factory of the cell by a process what is called vectorial just synthesis of proteins now during transcription not only the mrna but also the trna we have ribosomal rna even the small nuclear rna are all transcribed not only a mrna but also these rnas are also transcribed but these rnas like ribosomal rna or we have what is called a transfer rna or small nuclear rna they do not undergo the process of translation to form the proteins they are having their own functions but they are not translated to form actually the specific protein this is what is happening so only the mrna has been translated to form protein but not all other RNAs like tRNAs or rRNAs or snRNAs they do not undergo the process of translation to form the protein now let's see what are the components needed for just the translation process the main component is ribosome with the ribosomal rna you know that when all the three types of rna are considered as non genetic rnas in eukaryotic cell they are taking part in the process of protein synthesis now we have the following components number 1 ribosome with ribosomal rna which is playing a structural and catalytic role then other rnas like messenger rna and the trna so all together three ribosomes the factory with our rna the one which is playing a structural and catalytic role then the messenger rna the one which is acting as a template which carries a message trna is the one which normally reads a message and carries amino acid to us what is called the ribosome where it is being added the amino acid is being added so they get assembled to form the protein and two important enzymes also taking part in the translation process one is amino acid synthetase an enzyme responsible for the formation of actually trna with amino acid hence called the unit amino acid trna trna with amino acid 
once linked is called a charged tRNA. The charged tRNA having amino acid linked is called as what is called amino acid tRNA. According to the name of the amino acid, they may be called, for example, glycine tRNA, alanine tRNA, like that. Simply we can say amino acid tRNA, the tRNA with amino acid linked to it. So that is brought about by this amino acid synthetase enzyme. You'll see the function later. The next enzyme, peptidyl transfer. It is an enzyme formed in the protoplasm. Amino acid synthetase is formed what is called in the cytoplasm. And this peptidyl transferase enzyme is formed in the ribosome. It is responsible for the formation of peptide bond between the carboxyl group and the amino group of amino acids. So peptidyl transferase in the ribosome for the formation of peptide bond. Amino acid synthetase enzyme found in the cytoplasm for linking together of the tRNA and the amino acid. The other components are, some of the additional components are also needed. For example, the initiation factors to initiate the process of, that is, protein synthesis or translation process, namely F1, F2, F3. Then we have the elongation factors, the growing factors G1. And also the termination factors, we can say what are called just actually the factor responsible for terminating the process of protein synthesis or translation process. The termination factors are nothing but mostly you see that from the stop codon or the termination codons. And then the release factors. The release factors are responsible for relieving that is what is called mRNA from that is a ribosome and also for the dissociation of the ribosome into the subunits. Then the source of energy is gonosine triphosphate. The energy for synthesis a protein by means of translation is probably GT. We'll see one by one. First, let us take the role of ribosome. You know that when the ribosome is a multi unit structure, a multi subunit structure, because it is formed of two components a large subunit and small subunit with the additional components like nucleic acid, namely RNA, and more than 80 different proteins. That's why I say it is a multi subunit structure. Containing RNA, normally the RNA found in the ribosome is nothing but the ribosomal RNA, that is a structural RNA forming the structure of the ribosome, hence called ribosomal RNA. I mentioned already it is not only doing the function of structure but also playing a catalytic role. So, our RNA is playing a structural and catalytic role found in the ribosome. Now, and about 80 different proteins are also found in that ribosome, all together to form the structure which is considered as a factor of a cell. Now, I mentioned earlier, this ribosome is considered as a cellular factory. The place where protein being synthesized, that is why it's called a cellular factory or protein factory of a cell. Where only you have amino acids that are similar to the to form a specific protein according to the message carried by the mRNA. In its inactive state, normally, the ribosome is formed, actually the ribosome is composed of two subunits, one large subunit and one small subunit in an inactive state. Only at the time of protein synthesis or translation only, they are all joined together to form a compact unit. So this large subunit in the case of a eukaryotic cell is 60 S, S stands for Swedberg unit, the sedimentation coefficient constant and small unit is 40 S. 60, 40, and totally 80 years subunit. So the ribosome in the case of actually eukaryotes is called 80 years. That is the size having 60 years larger subunit and then 40 smaller subunit. In the case of prokaryotes, we have again two subunits: a large subunit of 50 years and a small subunit of 30 years. Large subunit of 50 years and small subunit of 30 years. All together, when combined together, it is having a size sub 70 years. So, the nature of the ribosome in the case of eukaryotic cells at the time of active translation is 8 years, in bacterial cell, it is about 70 years. But being formed of two subunits, both are all joined together, compressed together to form 70 years in prokaryotic cells having 50 and 30, and eukaryotic cells we have 60 and 40. That is the nature of what is called the ribosome. So, the ribosome contains actually two subunits we found on RNA except. Now, normally it is considered as a protein factor of the cell and for just actually 
for the entering of the TRNA, amino acid TRNA, for peptide bond formation, for the just relieving of TRNA after the amino acid has been added, all being done because of the presence of certain specific site in the ribosome. So normally these sites are from the large subunit. The large subunit of ribosome has three primary sites, which are actually for binding amino acid TRNA and also for peptide TRNA binding site and also we have exit site. Now site number one simply called as amino acid site. So what is happening? Location at which what will happen? The TRNA with amino acid, what is called amino acid with TRNA? That is its anticodon because TRNA you know that when it is having an anticodon having anticodon on having a set of three nucleotides which form a complementary base pairing with the triplet of columns. So, amino acid site is nothing but a location at which the amino acid TRN only codon base pairs with what is called the triplet codon of mRNA. So, then only it ensues the correct sequence of amino acid, the correct what is called just amino acid is added to the growing polypeptide chain. So, the base pairing, what is called complementary base pairing, occurs at the site, A site where the amino acid TRNA comes or enters and forms a base pair, complementary base pairing occurs between the anticodon of TRNA, the one which carries amino acid, hence called amino acid TRNA, and the codon of mRNA. And that site is called as A site, simply called as amino acid TRNA site or A site. Now, just adjacent to this A site, we have another site, what is called peptidyl TRNA site. So, it is a location at which the amino acid is transferred from what is called amino acid TRNA to the growing polypeptide chain. Simply, we can say this is the region which holds the TRNA with amino acids. The TRNA with amino acids. Actually, the TRNA just with amino acids with the growing polypeptide chain. Simply, we can say instead of using the TRNA with amino acids, we can say it is a site which holds the TRNA with the growing polypeptide chain. The growing polypeptide chain is normally connected to the one of the TRNAs. We have the shifting later, and that is normally found in the A site. So, the location at which the amino acid normally is transferred from the TRNA to the growing polypeptide chain. So, this site holds a TRNA with the growing polypeptide TRNA with the growing polypeptide chain. This is simply called as P site. The third one is the E site. It is called as the exit site. It is the location of the site where normally the empty TRNA resides. It is being there for a short while after delivering the amino acid to form the protein. Now the empty amino acid, so the charged amino acid is nothing but the charged TRNA. So we can say the charged TRNA is nothing but TRNA with amino acid. The empty TRNA is nothing but TRNA without amino acid after delivering the amino acid to the formation of polypeptide chain. So, this E site is the location at which the empty TRNA resides before it is being released to the cytoplasm to bind another amino acid to repeat the process. So, as soon as it actually releases the amino acid or it just adds amino acid to the polypeptide chain, it becomes empty, deacylated TRNA, we can see. So, deacylated TRNA, which is normally residing this one site before it is being released into the cytosol or the cytoplasm, cytoplasm where once again it binds with another amino acid to repeat the process. Now, if you just analyze uh, the nature, the arrangement of these three sites. So, with reference to the actually the RNA, a messenger RNA, what will happen? So, these three sites are oriented. These three sites are oriented in 5 dash, 3 dash direction. Now this is 5 dash and this is 3 dash. So EPA in 5 dash, 3 dash direction because the RNA is always, actually the messenger RNA, sorry, the ribosome is always moving to, suppose we have, remember that one, this is a messenger RNA attached to that one. So mRNA binding site is being actually bound to that one. The ribosome is moving left. And always, actually, sorry, it is always moving just towards what is called this is a 5 dash end and 3 dash end. So, the what is called the orientation given 5 dash 3 dash for these three regions with reference to the MR. So, 5 dash 3 dash. 
Now, because the ribosome is always moving towards what is called 3 dash end of mRNA. So, regarding the orientation of these three sites, what is called peptidyl tRNA binding site, I mean, acyl tRNA binding site, and that one that is E side, the exit site, it is arranged or oriented from pi dash to 3 dash in the mRNA that is in EPA form. So, exit site. Then we have peptide transfer site, and then what is called amino acid tRNA site. This is what is happening. We'll go back. That's why I mentioned here. You see that one with respect to mRNA, not actually with respect to ribosome, with respect to mRNA. The three sites are oriented 5 dash to 3 dash in EPA form because the ribosomes are always moving towards the 3 dash end of the mRNA. I mentioned earlier the ribosome is not only playing a structural role but also acting as a catalyst. In such cases, we can say this R RNA is called as ribozymes. One such example in the case of bacteria, one ribosomal RNA, namely 23S ribosomal RNA, which is acting as a catalyst. And such actually catalytic what is called RNAs, ribosomal RNAs are called ribozymes. So when the R RNAs are acting as a catalyst, that is doing the process of what is called either splicing or some other reaction, then they are called as ribosomes. So, the ribosomes, that is why I said it is playing a structural and catalytic role. Not only forming the structure of the ribosome, but also it is concerned with the catalysis, sorry, concerned with the catalysis of chemical reactions. Because it is actually, you see, if I mentioned that in some cases, it is essential the formation of peptide bond between the carboxyl group and the amino group of amino acids. That is why it is called as a ribosome. So when it is playing a catalytic role, then it is called what is known as a ribosome, nothing but the RNA. Now I mentioned about the structure. EPA structure, these are all the three sites, exit site and peptidyl transferase site. The peptidyl transferase site, or simply we can say peptidyl tRNA binding site. It is called peptidyl transferase site, or simply we can say peptidyl that is tRNA binding site. Because here only the tRNA with peptides just shifted and finally transferred here, like that is happening. So, formation of peptide bone, and because of that, actually the transfer of amino acids to the next region. Binding between the carboxyl and the amino groups of amino acids to form peptide, that's why it's called peptidyl T or any binding cell. Where only you have the enzyme peptidyl transcripts is formed doing the action of what is called formation of peptide bond. Now, this is amino acid TRNA binding site. The TRNA with the amino acid is moving and enters here within the ribosome and it forms a base pairing with what is called just the messenger RNA codon and having the tRNA with amino acid and transferring it to the P site, etc. what is happening one after another during the elongation of uh, Now, this is another picture of model. I mentioned you see that one, this is a large subunit, the small subunit. This is the mRNA, which is running in 5 dash 3 dash direction. Now the ribosome is always moving towards the 3 dash direction. So, with, the regular, with reference to what is called this mRNA, the orientation of this EPA is, this is E and this is P and this is A side. So, P side, A side and A side. So, now you see that one, this is amino I mean, acyl tRNA with amino I mean, acid. It forms a base pairing with what is called the codon of mRNA. And once already we have, this is peptidyl, the peptidyl what is called the binding site. This is the tRNA with the peptide chain. Soon, actually, one new tRNA with the amino acid enters. There is a peptide bond formed between the carboxyl group of amino acid and the amino group of amino acid. Normally, the new amino acid is added to the C end, what is called the carboxyl end. Now, this is a carboxyl end, this is amino end, what we have. And as soon as what is called a bridge being formed, namely the peptide bond. Now this is the what is called peptide transferase binding site having a long polypeptide chain. Soon once the new amino acid has been bound with this amino acid, now the peptide bond is shifted towards what is called the A pair. Now the P site having a TRME which is empty in nature after transferring this polypeptide to A. Now it is being shifted towards the left side that is called the E site 
and from there it is being relieved. So what is happening here? That is deacylated. There is nothing but empty TRNA without amino acid has been released from this exit site. And we have the peptide bone, a polypeptide chain connected to this TRN, that is why it's called peptide transferase site. And soon that peptide has been transferred to A after a bridge or bone being formed between this amino acid and the last amino acid, namely here the side. This is the seventh amino acid. A peptide bond is formed between the seventh and sixth. As soon as a peptide bond is formed, this polypeptide chain is shifted to A so that it becomes empty and charged. So this is a charged one. This is one with the peptide bond, and this is a site where you have this uncharged one or the empty TRNA which is being released. This is what is happening during the process of protein synthesis. Now the ribosome is always actually the mRNA is not moving. The ribosome is always moving towards the three dash direction. So that one by one the amino acids added to form a long chain of protein, a long polypeptide chain. Now what is the role of MR? I mentioned already it contains codons and these codons are normally decoded. The message in the mRNA has been decoded and translated to form one protein as in the case of eukaryotic cells and more than one protein in the case of prokaryotic cells. So the message carried by the mRNA has been decoded and finally translated to form either one protein in the case of eukaryotic cells or many proteins or many polypeptides in the case of what is called prokaryotic cells. And normally in the mRNA, the coding region starts with the start codon. We have seen already the messenger RNA always, suppose it's a messenger RNA, this is the initiated codon having what is called AUG in the previous diagram what is what is seen. And the termination codon, any one of the termination codons like UAE, UAG, or UGA. So this is a coding region. The coding region starts with what is called the start codon, namely AUG for methionine, and ends with the stop codon or the termination codon. Not all the three codons, any one of the stop codons here you have. This is what we have. Now, along with this one on either side, what I mentioned just to you have untranslated regions, UTR, 3 dash UTR and 5 dash UTR regions. So what do you mean, what is the meaning of that UTR regions? These are all untranslated regions. They cannot be translated to form proteins, but they are being transcribed along with the coding sequence. So these are all small sections of MR present before what is called the start codon. <coughs> at the 5 dash end and also at the end, at the end, after what is called the stock codon, at the end, at the 3 dash end after the stock codon. So at the 5 dash end before the stock codon, AUG, and at the just actually end, we have just at the 3 dash end after the stock codon, that is UAA, UAG or UG. So these are all the regions what we call the untranslated region, what I showed already in the figure in the picture to begin with. Two regions, one towards the what is called 5 dash end, another one towards what is called 3 dash end. The one which is formed at the 3 dash end is after what is called the stop codon. The one which is formed towards the 5 dash end is just actually before the start codon AUG. Now what is the role of these actually untranslated regions? So I mentioned all of these regions are also transcribed, only the introns which are transcribed has been removed. So along with the introns, exons, these regions also transcribed. But during processing, the introns have been removed, but these UTR regions have not been removed. They are present along with what is called exons, that is why they are said to be exonic. As they are present in the mature, that is mRNA. So in the mature mRNA, we have the coding sequence namely the exons and also ATR. That is why it is also considered as exonic region. But they are not being translated. But what is the importance of this UTR? Now this UTR normally provides stability for RNA, particularly mRNA. It provides actually stability for mRNA and also the mRNA localization and also for efficient translation activity. So translation and provide, actually it provides translation efficiency for the mRNA. So all related to what is called the mRNA activity. It confers mRNA stability, 
mRNA localization and translational efficiency. It increases the efficiency of mRNA to translate the protein. So normally, it contains a ribosome binding site. That is why it is used. So ribosome is the place, you know that one, the protein being synthesized. And once normally the binding site for mRNA is the ribosome. And now the ribosome is normally attached to this UTR of mRNA. The ribosome is normally attached to the UTR of mRNA. So that is why we can say this UTR of mRNA contains a binding site for ribose. So it has a specific name. It is nothing but what is called this site is a protein normally. This site is normally protein. Somehow we can say, sorry, I made a mistake. This is not a protein. We have the nucleotide uh, sequence. Uh, sorry for that part. So it contains ribosome binding site. This is nothing but a small stretch of RNA. Now, this site is known as differently in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. In the case of prokaryotes, this site is known as shine dolgarno box. The shine dolgarno box is nothing but untranslated region, untranslated region found in the case of mRNA of what is called just bacteria. The same one is called Cossack box in the case of vertebrates. So there is a binding site in the UTR region of mRNA for ribosome. That binding site is called that is shine dalgarno box, the one which contains AGG, AGG repetitive sequence, AGG, AGG repetitive sequence. In the case of bacteria, the same one in vertebrates is called Cossack box. So just like the Tata box found in the case of promoter region for just directing the RNA polymerase. You know that one. Directing the RNA polymerase towards what is called transcription starting site. Like that. So now this one UTR region contains what is called the ribosome binding site and that is called either the shine dalgarno box in the case of bacteria or Cossack box in the case of eukaryotes. That's the importance of UTR. So UTR must be needed for mRNA for translation activity.